What's up, everybody? This is Tiff from the last day bringing the brand video today. We're going to be talking about worlds in this video, actually. And with worlds just around the corner, relatively, I kind of wanted to go over a few decks that I believe that might actually see a bit of play there. Um, as, uh, as a lot of you know, the ban list for that, for that particular event is massive. And uh, um, all of this right here is basically what it's going to entail. Uh, so what I'm going to go over is basically what decks I believe are going to be relatively okay and what decks are going to be kind of not okay, well not really not decks that aren't okay but decks are pretty that are pretty good this form this in this particular format. So I want to get just let, let's just get right into it because I feel like that there's a few things I want to talk about uh, over the over the course of this whole thing so let's just jump right into it. So the first thing I want to actually talk about I'm going to go from the correspondingly is how, how I see fit as Cleefords. Cleefords, I believe that have a very good uh, has a very good uh, chance to do uh, be in this event. I think Card and Mice is going to be overlooked a lot of the time, but it's going to be a very very strong powerhouse card for consistency sake. Um, so in general, I think that uh, decks that can benefit off a card a card and Mice such as Cleefords Scout and Yosenjus will probably see a bit of play. They might not take the entire event, but I feel like that that these will be a, a little bit of a stupid deck. Right? Cleave Force probably have a better chance than the Ascensions in my opinion, but regardless of that, I still believe that some Cardinamized deck will make it in, into the, the the forefront of how this is going to be. Um, also, I think Perform Palace, despite Monkey Board being banned and a lot of other good uh, Perform Pal cards such as. Um, a damage juggler and a plush bar being banned as well. Um, I think this. I think perform pals, regardless of that, still have a decent chance of being okay. Especially since they can also manipulate the uh, the magic specter engine by running Bon Poku and um, uh, Unicorn and uh, uh, QB, and they can also run their own Frenzy Bearer thanks to the thanks to that card, um, thanks to the the magic specter engine as well. Um, so I think in general that. Uh, with the incorporation of Magic Specters, um, you'll see a Magic Specter Perform Pal deck kind of make its way into the forefront, I guess, at some point. It probably won't win the event, unfortunately, because I don't think it's going to be strong enough to compete with the other decks that are probably going to be a part of there. So, you know, we'll see how it unfolds, but I think that at least one Perform Pal deck will make its way in there, despite all the hits to it. So Telenice, this is one of an this is kind of a controversial choice simply because um, people don't want this deck to top uh, or win the event again twice in a row. Um, but since the Telenice basically have no hits to their name, um, I think this is it's a very very good a very strong format for them, especially since they also can play cards that target now, since Cosmos are basically out of the running, and Kaijus, to an, to an extent, the Kaijus really didn't make that big of a difference anyway. But particularly Cosmos, um, kind of see this see this deck kind of bit more in the limelight a little bit more, uh, simply because while well, they could play Phoenix Chain, they could play uh, other their abusable uh, uh, spell and trap cards that negate effects and stuff like that. They could play Breakthrough Skill if they want to. So... I feel like that this this card has a very good chance of being being a contender at the very least, because it's a very uh, a very uh, formidable deck at the very least. Also, you can um, play cards like Card of Demise as well, to, um, um, since um, they do have a lot since they can play a lot of traps and they often do. Um, so Card of Demise is kind of a, a shoe in for this deck a little bit in some ways. Um, the next deck I want to talk about is Cyframes. I also feel like since the removal of Cosmos, Cyframes have a very significant chance of winning. Um, regardless of how the format stands, I think Cyframes will probably want to be one of the best sleeper decks in the format. Um, they will probably periodically go in and out, in and out, constantly of being good or not. Um, but Cyframes in the Worlds format, where nothing of their deck is hit, they hit uh, everything is perfectly fine. Everything is at three. Um, this card, this deck, especially with Cyframe Lord Omega being a powerful card, will see some shine. I think might in the near future. Plus, it's also one of those decks that people don't really expect to see in these kinds of events. Much in the same respect as um, you know, or Cleave Forts, they might not be completely good or competitively viable at the moment. But in the format of Worlds of how it's structured, I think Cyframes have a very, very good chance. 
And the last two decks, I think, have very good chance, chances of, of being in this event, despite um, all the negative hits that the deck has received so far. So the first deck I want to talk about is Burning Abyss. Uh, Burning Abyss has a very good chance, despite Dante being at one in this format. They don't really need Dante to, to, to accumulate so much advantage. Um, they can use uh, the Phantom Knight uh, engine, which it undoubtedly is considered, is, is some people consider it as the worst version of that deck, or a bit l less consistent version of that deck. However, since that consistent, since that version is, is at this point in this, in this format particularly the most um, competitively uh, viable, it should seem like a, a, like, a, like a natural fit into the world's format to where uh, Dante might be, be only at one, but Breaksword is still at three, and Breaksword is still a fantastic card. And especially now since, again, similarly like, like Phoenix Chain and Satella Knights, Breaksword targets, so Breaksword will have a lot more impact on the board than it would if it were if Cosmos were in, in, into the game as well. Um, all in all, I think that Burning Abyss has, has a very good chance of winning simply because of, of PK Fire uh, as a whole. Um, so I feel like that this 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 deck will probably either win the event or be really 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 in the top end of it. Um, the next and the final deck that I want to talk about is um, Monarchs. Despite um, Domain and despite Pantheism and despite other de other cards for the deck going to one, um, Monarchs have a very very high chance of getting this event simply because of two things. One, the Super Quantal uh, version of the deck still exists. Basically, uh, when when Monarchs were just in their in their prime, I guess when they're just kind of getting there into the into that um, forefront. Um, Super Quantals were a very, very big, big uh, aspect into the game for them, um, simply because of how things worked. Um, essentially, what it what it comes down to is this card being really good, as well as the rest of the Super Quantal. Super Blue Lair is still pretty good. Hugo Run Yuki Usagi in it, as well. So, yeah. Um, also, they have the Brilliant Fusion version. They have, brilliant, they, have, they have Brilliant Monarchs, which is still a fantastic build. They only really need one of each copy, sure. Pantheism is the consistency of the deck. However, I feel like that they can kind of mitigate the consistency of that deck just a little bit by playing this, that, by playing this variant in particular. I could be very wrong, of course, but I feel like that, in general, Monarchs have a very good standing in the format, um, despite their inconsistencies. Plus, they could just cycle in um, Allure of Darknesses for... Um, for pantheisms anyway. Sure, it's not as searchable and it's not as viable, but they still have also killer cards like Storm Forth. They also have uh, March of the Monarchs, which is pretty good. Majesty Fiend is still a fantastic card. Fanta uh, Majesty Fiend basically will uh, is one of the cards that I that is a really really good card. It will put the put the match to sleep, and basically you just poke and win for the for, for game there. Um, so I feel like that these uh, that Monarchs in particular have, has a very very high chance of winning. Um, so, yeah. Um, I also, uh, like I said, all these decks have, are very, very viable. I'm not, I'm not too sure about. Again, I'm not too sure about Cleeforts or Yosinjus or even Perform Palace for that matter. But I think that uh, Monarchs, you know, um, Cyframes, uh, Burning Abyss, and Satellanites all have a very good chance of taking the event. They have a very good uh, way, um, method of playing the event out, and they have a really long grind game. That's also something something I want to point out that all these cards, kind of all these um, decks, have a really good grind game. Monarchs have a really good grind game. Burning Abyss have an excellent grind game. Cyframes and Satellanites have a really really good grind game. So. I think it's going to come down to the wire when it comes to these four decks in particular. I could be wrong. I could very, very be very wrong. So don't take my words as, salt, as fact. Um, but I feel like that these decks have a very good way, chance of winning. So, yeah. I I'm just, uh, anyway, guys, I want to let you guys, guys all go. Tell me what you guys think. What might actually make the top competitive pick? I also kind of forgot heroes. I didn't mean to, but I, they kind of it kind of just slipped my mind. But in the making of this video. But anyway, guys, tell me what tell me what you guys think about this, and tell me what you think might actually top the event. I'll see you guys in the next video. This has been Chris I'm going to be signing out later, guys.